In today's tutorial, we'll be creating this cutout effect all on the edit page. But before we get started, if you haven't seen my website yet, JRTV, there's tons of different pre-made assets there. And if you haven't seen the new membership service that's on the website, there are a bunch of different tutorials of how to use DaVinci Resolve Infusion, as well as some pre-made assets. And then the icing on the cake is if you're working on a project in DaVinci Resolve or Infusion and you need some support for your project, you can also uh, within the pro membership, shoot me a line and I'll be able to help you out with that. So here we are in DaVinci Resolve. The first thing I'm gonna do is bring in my footage into my project. And then we're gonna go down to the settings and figure out what we want our frame rate and timeline resolution to be. We'll set that up quick. And then once we have that set, we'll bring in our piece of media. So this is going to be the beginning of my project that I'm working on. And at the beginning, I want there to be a little bit of black space and then for this effect to come on. So I'm just going to go in, let's just go in 10 frames, just using the arrow keys until we get to 10. This first little area is going to be the frames. Then we have seconds, minutes, and hours. So I'll just bring that in just like that. And then next we'll come up to the effects and then in toolbox, we'll come down to titles and we'll get this text plus. We'll drop that right there on our timeline. And then just put in here wherever you want the beginning title sequence to say. And then next, we're just going to pick a font that's a little on the thicker side for this effect to look the best. So I have a font. I believe that these are on, um, if you look up Google fonts, uh, Google has a bunch of fonts and a whole like font website. You can take a look and I believe that's where I got these at. That's pretty much that. And then I'm, I'm going to pick a, a way in which I want this to first look like the size. So that's looking pretty good there. Next, we're gonna be using this right on effect here. So I'm just going to bring it all the way over. So the end is all the way over this way. And our playhead is right at the beginning there. So we're gonna click this little button that's going to add a keyframe. That's just saying at this moment in time on our timeline, these are the parameters that I want. And then I'm gonna go in, let's say 15 frames from where we are. So 25 we're what we wanna get to. And that's just for this particular project. You can really play around with this until you get some timing that works for you. I'm gonna bring it all the way out. So now we have this little right on effect where all of our letters are going across. Perfect. The next thing that I need to do is some type of animation here. So that's the first animation that we have. And then I want a little bit of moment in time for, for the viewer to actually read this before we you know, have it go really big and, and show off this background here. So whatever that timing is, I like to click this little button so we can see right where our keyframe is. And then from here, I think I'm gonna go an extra, um, I don't know, let's do 15 frames, just using the arrow, or 20 frames, just using the arrow key and gonna hit it 20 times. There we are. I'm gonna hit this um, keyframe here on the size, cause that's what we're gonna be changing, that size, right? And then the next uh, jump I'm going to do is going to be a two second jump. So I'm just gonna hold down the shift and use my arrow keys again. That's one whole second, there's two seconds. I'm gonna keyframe that again, and now we're going to move this slider up. And one thing that you'll notice is at the end of this slider, it doesn't get quite big enough. The cool thing with a lot of the parameters, if there isn't a maximum, you can just type in here whatever you want. So let's just type in here 15. Okay, so 15 might be a little too big. Let's bring it back a little bit. Where are we here? We're getting pretty big. And so one of the things that we need to do, as you, as you can see, is as this is getting bigger, it's going, its anchor point is in the middle of the screen, which is perfectly fine. We wanna keep the anchor point there, but we're going to have to adjust a couple of things. So let's put this back to 15, but then down here we have the vertical anchor and the horizontal anchor. So if we were to shift this, we can see that we quickly move it over. And I'm just gonna make this a little smaller. Now, depending on what letters you're working with, uh, this is going to kind of vary in how you do this, but I just wanted to make it a little smaller so that both sides of this, I'm just going to hold down shift so I can adjust this, or excuse me, holding down control, adjusting this uh, will give us finer adjustments there. So something like that, so it's even on both sides. And then by the time it gets here, I want this to just be full screen. So something like that. So maybe even just 10 is enough. 
So now we have our keyframes here. We have our first keyframe and our end keyframe, but then we have this adjustment here. And depending on how much you change this adjustment, it's not gonna look very centered. And if I was to look, you could see it's kind of a little wider on this side than this side. So that's something else that we're also going to be keyframing. So I'm just coming to the first keyframe before the size actually changes. I'm gonna hit this button here to keyframe this. And then remember we want two seconds. So I'm just gonna go one second and then I'm going to hit the keyframe again. So now in between these two little areas, this first one, coming back to the first one, I can just make that a zero. So now we have zero and then as it's going, it's going to get you know over to, it's going to shift it a little bit. But one thing that you'll notice is as it's shifting it, it's looking like, you know, it's kind of, it might work, it might not work, but I really don't like how this looks. So I'm actually gonna have to jump into Fusion. Now this isn't something that you have to do, but if you want it to look a little more polished, you might wanna take a stab at doing this. So over here in our inspector, we have this little button here to go into Fusion. Now this is going to go in specifically the Fusion comp that's connected to this text plus node. So clicking that, it's going to go over into here, and this is probably what yours is going to look like. We're gonna click on this uh, template uh, node here and then click Spline. From here, you're going to see the template here in a bunch of different settings. So we can click this button to see all of them. Now this start uh, and end is this right on and we don't really want to mess with those. So we'll turn that off. And then we're going to come into here and we can see that our size, we don't really need to mess with that. But then this one right here, we'll just grab this N one, hit F and then we can hit T and we'll increase this. So let's take a look and see how this looks so far. It's not looking horrible. Is it really necessary that you need that? No, but we'll just roll with it um, just so you know how to do that. So now that we've done that, we can see that we have one big difference than um, the, the thing that you initially saw. And that was that we can see everything here and our text is white. So we're gonna be doing this all in this one particular tool so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here to layout. And then in layout here, we have a background. So I'm just going to increase the alpha here, which will now make it black. So it's going from black to black. That's looking great. But now we have to get this particular text to be transparent. So we're gonna come over into shading. And then in shading here, we have all of these color controls. Now you might say, okay, well this, you know, changes the color as well. But all this is going to change is all the settings that are over here. And the one thing that this is lacking over here is the alpha channel, right? So what we're gonna do is just go down all of these and make these all zero. Zero, tab, zero, tab, zero, tab, zero. Done. Now we can see through it, as you can see there. So if we play this, we can see through it and then it's gonna get bigger. And as you can see, then we can see through it. And you can really cut this off wherever you want. So like, okay, now we see the whole thing. You can just bring the end of it right to there. So you don't have to worry about any of this initial, you know, any more of this caching to happen. And there we go. We have a perfect way to reveal whatever our location is. So you could have this say, you know, New York City, and then, you know, it go, then goes into some New York City. But I wanna take this a step further and it's been a little while since I've used or shown off the sound library. And at one point, uh, Blackmagic was actually offering a bunch of different sounds that you could get for DaVinci Resolve. Now, I don't know if they package it with it anymore or if it's somewhere on their website. If you do some Googling and look up Blackmagic sound library or DaVinci Resolve sound library, you might be able to find the sounds that came out at one point but we're gonna go in and we're gonna get some of those sounds. So we come over here to the sound library and what I'm going to search in here. Now, there are a bunch of different databases. These are all like my databases, but we're looking for the Fairlight Sound Library database. And then in here, I'm just going to put in low and I forget exactly what it's called, low, something like that. Okay, there we are. So now we have this and we have this sound. Now, I'm just going to grab that sound, bring it into our project, and then in here, I'm going to right click and I'm going to change the speed of this. We're gonna go down to 25% speed. 
Let's close that so we have a little more room to work with here. And I'm going to grab the second speed here. Might need to make it even slower, but I'm gonna take off the beginning here and just have the second speed here. And I'm going to come in and let's try messing with these semitones. We could do something like that. Now, I didn't realize that this was such a slow animation. We could speed up the animation a little bit, or we could just change the length of this. This is getting kind of too slow though. Something like that with additional sounds in here would probably make this sound a bit better. But just wanted to give you some options that you could roll with. Um, but overall, I mean, even without the sound effect, I feel like the animation is pretty cool as a way to reveal a new location. You can really do this with any type of font. You don't have to have this as a black background, but I felt like, you know, starting it off black and then continuing it then having the letters come in would be a really cool way to show that off. But that's pretty much this tutorial in a nutshell. I hope you guys enjoyed it, maybe learned a thing or two about all the different options and, and uh, tools that you can use within the text plus node. And then as well as, you know, they turned it into a template file so that you could do this all right on the edit page. The only thing that we really went into Fusion for is to add that easy and they haven't enabled you to have that option yet uh, with uh, fusion keyframes on the edit page that I'm aware of. If they change that, let me know in the comments. Again, take a look at the website. If you ever need help with your DaVinci Resolve projects, you could be a part of the pro membership and I'd be more than happy to help you with that. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Again, my name's JR. Thank you for watching and until the next one, peace.